셀피 시즌 리차드 도킨스 더 셀피 시즌 챕터 4 더진 머신즈 서바이벌 머신 비겐 에즈 패시브 리셋터클 포더 진스 프로바이딩 리들 모덴 월즈 투 프로텍트 댐 프롬 더 케미컬 워페어 오브 더 라이벌 앤드 Ravages of Accidental Molecular Bombardment In the early days, they fed on organic molecules freely available in the soup. This easy life came to an end when the organic food in the soup, which had been slowly built up under the energetic influence of centuries of sunlight, was all used up. A major branch of survival machines, now called plant, started to use sunlight directly themselves to build up complex molecules from simple ones, re-enhancing as much bigger speed of a synthetic process of the original soup. Another branch, now known as animal, discovered how to exploit the chemical labels of the plants either by eating them or by eating other animals. Both main branches of survival machines evolved more and more ingenious tricks to in increase their efficiency in their various ways of life, and new ways of life were continually being opened up. Sub-branches and sub-sub-branches evolved which one excelling in a particular specialized way of making a living in the sea, on the ground, in the air, on the ground, up trees, inside other living bodies. This sub-branching has given rise to the immense diversity of animals and plants which is so impress us today. Both animal and plant evolved into many celled bodies, complex copies of all genes being distributed to every cell. We do not know when, why, or how many times independently this happened. Some people use the metaphor of a colony, describing a body as a colony of cells. I prefer to think of the body as a colony of genes and of the cell as a convenient working unit for the chemical industries of the genes. Colonies of genes, they may be, but in their behaviors, bodies have undeniably in, acquired an individuality of their own. An animal moves as a coordinated whole, as a unit. Subjectively, I feel like a unit, not a colony. This is to be expected. Selection has favored genes that cooperate with others. In the fierce competition for scarce resolution, resources, scarce resources, in the relentless struggle to eat other survival machines and to avoid being eaten, there must have a premium on central coordination rather than anarchy within the communal body. Nowadays, the intricate mutual co-evolution of genes has proceeded to such an extent that communal nature of an individual survival machine is virtually unrecognizable. Indeed, many biologists do not recognize it and will disagree with me. Fortunately, for what journalists would call the credibility of the rest of this book, the disagreement is largely academic, just as it's not convenient to talk about quanta and fundamental particles when you discuss the working for a car, so it's often tedious and unnecessary to keep dragging genes in when we discuss the behavior of survival machines. In practice, it's usually convenient 
as an approximation to regard the individual body as an agent trying to increase the number of all its genes in future generations. I shall use the language of convenience unless otherwise stated altruistic behavior and selfish behavior will mean behavior directed by one animal body toward another. This chapter is about behavior, the trigger of rapid movement which has been largely exploited by the animal branch of survival machines. Animals become active go getting genes, speakers, gene machines. The characteristic of behavior as a biologist use the term is that it's a past. Plants move but very slowly and seen in highly speed up pillar, climbing plants look like active animals, but most plant movement is really irreversible growth. Animals, on the other hand, have evolved ways of moving hundreds of thousands of times faster. Moreover, the movement they make are reversible and repeatable on indefinite number of times. The gadget, the animal evolved to achieve rapid movement was the muscle. Muscles are engines which like the same engine in the internal combustion engine. Use energy stored chemical fuel to generate mechanical movement. The difference is that the immediate mechanical force of a muscle is generated in the form of tension other than gas pressure, as in the case of steam and internal combustion engines. But muscles are like an engine in that they are exact the forces on cord and levers with hinges. In us, the levers are known as bone, the cords are tension, and the hinges are joint as joint. Quite a lot is known about the exact molecular ways in which muscles work, but I find more interesting the question of how muscle contra contractions are timed. Have you ever watched an artificial machine of some complexity, a knitting or a sewing machine, a loom, an automatic bottling factory? What a hay baler. Motive power. Motive power comes from somewhere. An electric motor, say, what a tractor. But much more baffling is the intricate timing of the operations. Valves open and shut in the tire right water, steel fingers deftly tie a knot around the hay bale and then adjust the right moment or knife shoot out and cut the string. In many artificial machines, timing is achieved by the brilliant invention, the cam. This translates simply rotary motion into a complex rhythmic pattern of the operations by means of the eccentric or special shaped wheel. The principle of the muscle box is similar. Other machines such as the steam organ and pianola use the faithful rolls or cards with holes punched in a pattern. This need there has been a trend toward replacing such simple mechanical timers with electronic ones. Digital computers are examples of a large and versatile electronic device much which can be used for generating complex time pattern of movement. The basic component of the hunt of a modern electronic machine like a computer is the semiconductor of which a family from is the transistor. Survival machines seem to have bypassed the cam when the punch the card tool together. All together, the apparatus they use for timing their movement has more in common with the electronic computer. Although with strict 
completely different in fundamental operation. The basic unit of biological computers, the nerve cell or neurons, is really nothing like a transistor in its internal working. Certainly, the code in which neurons communicate with each other seems to be a little bit like the pulse code of digital computers. But the individual neurons is a much more sophisticated data processing unit than the transistor. Instead of just three connections with other component, component a single neuron may have tens of thousands. The neuron is slow than the transistor, but it has gone much further in the direction of virtualization, a trend which has dominated the electronics industry over the past two decades. This is brought home by the fact that there are some 10,000 million neurons in the human brain, you could pack only a few hundred transistors into a skull. Plant has no need of the neuron because they get their living without moving around, but it's found in the great majority of animal groups. It may have been discovered early in animal evolution and inherited by all groups, or it may have been rediscovered several times independently. Neurons are basically just cells with a nucleus and chromosome like other cells, but their cell walls are drawn out in long, thin, wire-like projection. Often a neuron has one particularly long wire called the axon. Although the width of the axon is microscopic, its length may be many feet. There are single axons which run the whole length of a giraffe's neck. The axons are usually bundled together in thick, multi-stranded cables called nerves. This leads from one part of the body to another, carrying messages, not like trunk telephone cables. Other neurons have short axons and are confined to dense concentration of nervous tissue called ganglia, or they, when they are very large, brain. Brain may be regarded as analogous in function to computers. They are analogous in the both types of machine generate complex pattern of output after analysis of complex pattern of input and after reference to stored information.